Hello and welcome back to SRB Gaming. This is KSB Exploration uh, and today we are sending an interplanetary These will be headed to the EVE system, namely uh, EVE's moon Gilly, the small asteroid moon, 13 kilometer radius, very low gravity. Uh, it is a possible target for future manned missions because of its low gravity and uh, because it would be very easy to get resources back into Earth due to set up not Earth, back into orbit due to said gravity. Uh, we are launching two probes. One is the uh, Gilly Unmanned Lander, a tiny little lander with uh, surface samplers for scanners and uh, solar panels uh, boosted, propelled by chemical rockets. And the second is the GSAT, which is the Gilly Scanning Satellite, it contains a narrowband scanner and uh, uses ion propulsion with two small solar panels. Because of their small mass, relatively small, less than approximately three tons, they were eligible to be launched aboard MSL-derived SSTOs. Uh, SSTOs single-staged orbit, so it's a rocket that can get to orbit without dropping any mass other than the fuel. And that's exactly what we're seeing. Uh, and by MSL-derived, I mean these are very similar to the rocket I used to launch. MSL, which Minmus Surface Lander, it's the crew transporter to Minmus. So, what happened with all of these is the s booster was enough to get them into orbit and possibly a bit farther. But after that, they deployed, and they're using different propulsion methods here. So, this is our first transfer window. The GS sat, after decoupling from the single staged orbit launcher, uses an ion engine. With just one Dawn propulsion engine uh, combined with the new large xenon tank which holds quite a bit of xenon. It was using two 2x3 two solar panels so not very big. This means that the uh, GSAT cannot actually run its engine indefinitely until the fuel runs out because it will slowly begin to run out of power. However, as long as it's in sunlight, the battery power is enough to keep that engine on for quite a long time. And, uh, it should still should still be fine to run. So the Gilly Lander, on the other hand, uses all chemical propulsion. So instead of just having a single stage to get into orbit, it well, I mean orbit around Gilly, it has two stages after getting into low carbon orbit. We have the transfer stage, which is a small little fuel tank with two radial Rocco Match twitch engines and a final landing stage which uses smaller engine. Now this was originally seemed to be an issue because I was afraid that the I knew the ion would be fine but I was afraid I wouldn't have enough fuel to get into EVE orbit. However due to a mid-course mid correction on the way to EVE with both of the ships I was able to uh, fix that problem and get into correct orbit. So both of these ships were launched uh, about, a, about a day apart into low carbon orbit and uh, then they quickly burnt about a day apart to uh, get them on a EVE arrival trajectory. trajectory. Now while the GS sat actually left first, the unmanned lander was the first one to actually enter the system due to the fact that it caught up to GS sat. Now what I did was uh, about halfway to EVE I made a mid course correction burn which dropped the periapsis, about, actually about, made it one third of what it initially was, to about around six to ten million uh, meters, depending on which probe you're looking at. After that, I did not aerobrake. These did not contain heat shields, and even if they didn't need them, I didn't want to be so close to the surface, as this would create a lot of delta V issues. So I just did a retrograde burn once near the periapsis, and uh, ended up in a quite inclined orbit, inclined both relative to the equator and to Gilly. So uh, I then had to do some burns to get into orbit around Gilly, and I had to do this individually with both ships because they were in different orbits. This took a while. Gilly's extremely small gravity is, while it provides a huge advantage in bringing resources and crew back from the surface, as it really doesn't take much fuel at all, it has a major disadvantage in that it's really hard to encounter. Combine that with its eccentric and inclined orbit and you have a problem. Now, 
the uh, unmanned lander was the first one to arrive in the Gilly, into Gilly orbit, and uh, it was not much of an issue. I went around a couple times, and once the encounter was close, I did some burns to correct, and finally got an actual encounter, and then uh, came in with about twenty to thirty thousand meter uh, circular orbit, and uh, that was in a stable orbit. And then um, the uh, GS sat with its ion engine while it had a much easier time getting to Eve because the ion engine really didn't have any fuel issues. I was going too fast on my first pass through Gilly. Due to the orbital inclination, I came in with about a relative speed of 800 meters per second, and I did my best to try to burn that off with the ion engine as soon as I entered the sphere of influence, but it didn't matter. It was not enough time. I came out the other side, and I had to do another pass, so after the first encounter, I had to come up with a second encounter, and once I got the second encounter, it was very easy to break with the ion engine. So GS sat remained in orbit, and uh, unmanned, the unmanned lander descended uh, to the Gilly surface. We landed in the Midlands biome. There were some issues where I forgot to switch to surface mode, which means I was moving across the surface at about 6 meters per second due to the rotation, but my orbit was showing zero, which was weird, but I managed to fix that. And the lander kind of was a very bumpy landing because Gilly's gravity is a 0.005 g, so actually significantly higher than Phobos, although Phobos is larger because it's in, it's in real solar system or in the, in the game or real life, in real life, much bigger, it's got much more mass than Gilly, so it, it's probably, I think it's slightly easier to encounter in real solar system, but I'm not sure, Gilly's just really annoying, but Gilly does have five times the surface gravity. So I'd like to talk a little bit about why I actually chose Gilly for these probes. Uh, as you know, or if you don't know, this series is kind of meant to be a progression series, so I am going to be exploring the solar system in Kerbal Space Program, and that means that you've seen me do things like send space stations. You don't necessarily need to do stuff like that to go to planets, but I'd like to make it semi-realistic, kind of, uh, even though it's not really, but I kind of want to have a lot of infrastructure as I progress, so you'll, this is what you're seeing. Gilly is a prime target for an off-world colony. And uh, it's also similar to the reason I chose Minmus. Gilly is obviously the smallest moon or any body in the uh, KSP system. And its low surface gravity means, as I mentioned before, you land on it, you're, you can get back in an EVA. You can probably get back in an EVA pack uh, rendezvous, and then go back in an EVA pack, and come back again, and then probably land one more time with extra fuel, I mean, even if you didn't have the nav ball, because of how low the gravity is, and that means mining resources on Gilly would be pretty much no losses from uh, getting back into orbit, as you might see, even on Minmus, especially on things like the moon, or a Dress. Dress is another target due to its uh, orbital asteroids. That's definitely a prime target, actually. But... While Gilly does not have the asteroids as Drez does, it has such low gravity that it's great for exploring the inner system. Now, there isn't much in the inner system. We have uh, Gilly, obviously, and there's Eve, and then uh, Moho. But there is still stuff there, and this would be a great stop on the way. So Gilly is a good target for manned missions. That's why I wanted to send these scanners. Now, I am going to need a clamshell scanner, the uh, actual scanner that goes to a polar orbit and gives you the resource concentrations. However, that was not sent today. That will be sent later. Um, I am considering adding some mods to this series. I wanted The ones I wanted were some USI mods, mainly the uh, life support as it looked pretty interesting. I also wanted to add Kerbal Inventory System, which is a newer version of CAS. Kerbal Attachment System looks really cool. As well as Kerbal Plus, which is a planet pack. I didn't really look at it much, but I just decided to, and uh, it had some cool stuff, like an extra moon to Eve, a badly needed extra moon for Duna, which resembles Phobos. Uh, there's a asteroid at a simulated Langrange 4 point in Ker uh, that orbits with Kerbin. That looks really cool. New Gas Giant. Uh, there's actually a cryovolcano mimicking Enceladus, but anyway, uh, if w let me know in the comments what you think about adding mods, because I'm not sure if I want to do that, I, I might want to keep this stock. Anyway, thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed this video, it's a rather bit of a longer one, but pretty cool mission, I think, and uh, it was fun to do, so yeah, thanks for watching, please subscribe if you enjoyed it, 
does help the channel and it motivates me to keep doing these. And uh, like and comment if you have any comments. You know, even if you hated the video, dislike it. I want to make sure people are actually watching this far. All right, thanks for watching. See you next time.